Some of the goals for 2024 included providing backup power to the fish room. And I looked at a whole variety of options. As you know, I have a um, uninterrupted power supply that's basically a, a giant battery that can run things for a short while. But if you get a long, uh, one of those long blackouts, let's say a power line goes down or there's a big storm and power can be out for between six and 10 hours or, or, or more, then uh, I'd be into a real problem. Now keep in mind, these fish often um, are shipped overnight or over the course of several days. They, they can survive, as long as they don't have a massive temperature change, they can survive for you, probably a day or two and they would be okay. You don't want to, you don't want to risk a, a couple things. One, uh, a lack of water movement creating a big drop in oxygen. And in the, in the case of my garage, if we didn't have any home heating or anything because of the, of the blackout, and it, was, and it was really cold outside, the temperatures could, could, could drop a lot in, in the aquarium. So this, this last winter, especially the, a week or two of freezing temperatures that we had, where I was basically had my fingers crossed that we didn't lose power, it just, it just moved me into action. So I'll, I'll, show you what I, I'll show you what I picked up, and I'll also talk with you about a couple other 2024 projects that are, that are getting underway and you're going to see sort of un, uh, unveiling over over the next over the next three or four months as as the year as the year progresses. A lot of these projects, by the way, are made possible by by you and and you're subscribing. You're you're participating in uh, in super chatting during the live streams in in uh, in Patreon participation. Right, the uh, the Garage Gang Patreon members. Uh, you're making a lot of this possible. So a big shout out to you and also a big shout out to uh, my friends at the Aquarium Co-op that are helping a lot and also uh, uh, to Josh who's going to be uh, helping me with some fish that uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking uh, more about in a minute. So let, let's just go ahead and get right into it. This is the uh, backup power unit that was delivered yesterday actually and it's on its side. I'm going to be unpackaging it. It might be a two-person job, we'll see. It is the uh, the Duromax, the Duromax uh, 12,000 unit. They call it a hybrid. I don't know what that means, but it's a XP 12,000 EH. And the reason I, I I wanted this unit or picked up this unit is because of the um, high wattage. It it will it will actually crank out 9,500 uh, watts. It can be connected to a 50 amp. So I'm gonna put a, a transfer of 50 amp right directly to the side of the house and just be able to just plug it in and I can run it on, uh, I can run the unit on propane. So I'm not gonna to have to mess with uh, uh, keeping gas stabilized and having gas foul up the carburetor. It's just, I'm just gonna run it off of, off of a propane. This unit was about $1,000 and uh, about 1,100 actually delivered to the house, that includes shipping, I got it on eBay, and I'll be uh, picking up probably a 60, uh, a 60 pound propane tank that you know stands, stands fairly tall, but we'll run it for, for a good amount of time. So 12,000 peak watts, 9,500 running watts. Assuming we, we're not running uh, major appliances, uh, it'll run the house, and I, I'll be able to run the AC, the heat, and uh, maybe just not run the washer dryer and uh, dishwasher and all that stuff right but this will run the whole house so once i get it set up i'll go ahead and and, uh, and share it with you it's uh these these units can be loud i'm probably going to end up creating an enclosure uh you know a ventilated enclosure for it uh that is that is uh, uh you know that is insulated to some degree because my neighbors are not too far away and they can be over 70 over 70 decibels so they can be pretty pretty loud but hopefully it's not for very long duration initially in the power outage i would run this uh this uninterrupted power supply right here and danair i think it's made by a company called danair and i would run it and it would keep up uh, it would keep the you know air pumps and things running for a few hours but if the if the power outage would, would go beyond that I would then have to switch over to, to the bigger unit. 
A big shout out to my friends over at the Aquarium Co-op, Zenzo and Corey and the gang over there. They're sending over some more plants. So this, what I call my planted aquarium, you know, it has some nice healthy uh, crypts and jungle val and anubias and things of that nature. I'm gonna be filling in some areas like, like right in here, you see a few bald spots here. Now you see sand, but underneath that sand, there's, there's what they call uh, a substrate that is, that is supposedly for plants. A lot of this stuff here, the substrate you see right there, which is a plant-specific plant substrate, is actually just under the surface of this sand. So at any rate, I'm gonna be dropping some more plants into there, some stem plants. So filling it in a little bit, making it a little bit greener. The plants that are in there now are looking pretty good. They're fairly well, well established. This, this, all my tanks are in need of a little cleaning. I'll probably do a little vacuuming on this tank. And uh, the plants, of course, they do a lot of the work absorbing uh, ammonia, keeping the nitrate levels down. But the fish, you can see, are doing great. Little albino ac acaras and lemons and rasboras, rummy nose, a few quarry cats, a lot of hornwort. <clears throat> hornwort drifts all over. I like it more on the right side of the tank, but it's all right right there for now. As you know, if you saw my last video, eventually these, these albino okaras are gonna be uh, moving into the 90 gallon right here. So this will be their home. Now I'm thinking about moving, um, doing it in stages. The most aggressive fish in this tank right now are the geos, which like going after each other a lot. You can see the, the tail, the tail on the geo. It has uh, definitely a little bit of damage to it. This one, that one's the dominant one, the one that just chased them off. So I'm thinking about maybe taking the geos and, and the red shoulder, which is also an aggressive guy. You see him there going after the, going after the gold, they're all right on cue. So those, those three bigger fish, I might just move over, move over to the 210 here, I'll show you. Drop them in here, drop them in this tank, and just watch them, watch them for about a month, see how they do or for a day if it gets real violent, right, and pull them back out. But put them in here, see how they, how they get along with this group of fish, which, which do well together. I mean, the, the, the fire mouth is, you know, always faces off with the Nicaragua, but nothing ever comes of it. But otherwise, this tank tends to be those silver dollars, my dither fish, but the, uh, this tank tends to be overall fairly peaceful. You know, you kind of, you get reluctant to mess with something that's working, but, but I want to move, I want to also bring in the, the red tear and see if it's possible for him to live here. Last time when I brought him over, there was a, a big dispute with, with the Salvini, but it was about the cave that I brought over. I brought over the big cave that, that at the time the red tear was living in, in the 55 gallon. So I'm not gonna bring that cave over this time. I'm just gonna bring the fish over and that way the, the Salvini will not have something that they wanna claim. So hopefully that will allow me to drop in the uh, red tear who's, who's, who's out from behind, he hides behind that cave all the time. Hard for me to get him on video. Sometimes if I zoom in, I can, I can get him. But if I can, if I can bring him over to the 210. Now that what that'll do is it'll free it'll free this tank up here. This 55 gallon and then that'll be used to acclimate and to quarantine some uh, some bigger cichlids that I'm hoping to get from Josh over at uh, Cunningham Tropicals. So if he can if he can play nice and not be a killer, not be a tear. I'll, I'll try them one more time in the 210, but bring them over at the same time that I bring over that, that I bring over the, uh, the the big geos and the uh, and the more aggressive red shoulder. So hopefully that'll create enough confusion 
enough confusion so that that red tear can get kind of settled in and there isn't a, a battle royale. This tank is available for quarantine, so I'll probably be quarantining some of the fish in here. I have noticed that since there have been no fish in quarantine in this little 29 gallon, I've gotten this, this big this, this big explosion of, uh, of these pagoda, baby pagoda snails. Not sure if you can see them on the glass, but there's a whole bunch of them. See them right up here at the edge of the water? Those are all baby pagoda snails. That's these kind of snails down here, these big, long, pointed snails, which are my favorite snail, actually. They're just beautiful. And, and so maybe, I'm thinking the fish maybe might have been eating the, <laughs> they might have been eating the offspring, which is why I wasn't getting more babies. This, this has a, a, a plant substrate underneath this sand cap. This is uh, like my, my closest thing to a dirted tank. It has fluval, fluval uh, plant substrate underneath this particular sand substrate. So you would think plants would do really well here, and for some reason stem plants have not done really well. The hornwort seems to love it, but uh, everything else tends to struggle a little bit. So I'll try, I'll try some more stem plants in here and see what happens. Have a little hospital tank that's that's ready, has a little bit of hornwort in it. And uh, here's the other 29 gallon, which is currently being used to grow out several fish, including, including my eel. You can see him there hanging out in the hornwort. He loves hanging out up here in the hornwort. Can, can you make him out? He's so cute. And, and then I've got these, uh, these beautiful blue dwarf rainbows. And they're just thriving in here. They just love it in here. So the, these rainbows, when I pull the, uh, right around the time when I pull the albino acaras out of that 55 and move them into the 90, I'll go ahead and transfer these rainbows over to that planted tank. I think they'll do well in there give them a little more room to swim around. But I just love the blue body and the red, the red fringe that they have. And they don't get a lot bigger than this. They get, they get a little bigger. You know, they'll put on another maybe, I don't know, an inch maybe, max. But they are a dwarf rainbow. They don't get large like the, like the, the larger, more common rainbow fish. But they are a very pretty fish. And of course, I've got a, just a ton of baby plecos. And I think I've got another batch about to come out because the dad has been in that cave behind that driftwood, like just fanning forever. So he's got more eggs in there for sure. A lot of hornwort in here as well. So acquiring discus fish is still on the table. And, and this is the, the tank that is slotted for it. And I'm hoping that this will eventually become a discus tank, but I do have to make some fish moves first and, and see how those work out and gradually transition this tank into being a discus tank. Throw some live plants in it. You know, I've got the, uh, the UV unit running right here and uh, doing a good job. Water clarity is good, water quality is good. So, and the fish are very healthy in this tank. It's a very mature tank. I think, I think discus will do great in it. Now, the other option I have, the other option I'm considering is, this is a 60 gallon acrylic tank that is currently just sitting here on its side. It was originally slotted to be a sump, but I didn't want to have to cut cut the side out on the 300 gallon stand. So here it sits unused, 60 gallon acrylic from my friends over at Glass Cages. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking of opening up this space. So that would mean relocating this tank, this little five gallon, and this 20 gallon rimless, 
putting them somewhere else and using this, this area here, the center area, for that 60 gallon. So that would fill in this entire area right here. So that could, uh, that could be a discus tank. Uh, that could be, I'm not sure what I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna put in it right now, but it just opens up another possibility of, uh, you know, of, of, of bringing new fish into the fish room. Uh, one other project that I'm working on has to do with, uh, on the topic of sums, has to do with sums. I'll show it to you. These fish have put on more size over the last, you know, over the last six months. And if I bring in those geos and add the, the red tear, it's just gonna increase the bio load. So I was thinking it might be time to consider a bigger sump to increase, um, just to increase the amount of, of sponge and the amount of water volume that would be going on with this tank. I currently, here I'll show you down here. This is a 29 gallon, this is a 29 gallon sump tank. It's doing an okay job, has a, a C Shea 9500 pumping a lot of water. Little Hyger heater down in there. It has some of those uh, sponges, those tall sponges from my friends over at Swiss Tropicals couple socks, a couple of socks that the water pours into. So I'm thinking of swapping this out with a 40 gallon. So I'll probably go over to uh, glass cages and talk with Joe about picking up a 40 gallon tank and not even bother putting in baffles. You see I put those little, I, I, I cemented in those baffles. I'm not even going to put baffles. I'll just use just the straight sponges like I did with this one and, uh, and certainly add that sponge to the new, new sump just to bring over the beneficial bacteria, but turn it into a 40 gallon so I have a lot more water volume, more dilution. So this will be swapped out, this 29 will be swapped out. And those are some of the upcoming projects over the next month or so that I'll be working on. So I'll have my hands full. It'll be a lot of fun and it'll give these guys up here just a, a lot, just a lot better quality they're already in great quality water but it'll just give them even better quality so there you have it that's what's going on here in the fish room currently as uh, 2024 evolves it's uh, going to be a great year with a lot of good stuff going on the, f the the room will get better and better i'm about to clear out some of the uh, some of the storage bins that i have behind me are going to get cleaned out to make more room. I'm not sure if, I, if I'll be pushing outward. I also need, of course, to create the space for that 60 gallon acrylic. So it's, uh, it's, it's moving along, it's moving along. The key in all of it is patience. Just, just you know, do it one step at a time, do it, do it right. And, uh, and th this is gonna be a, a, just a great year for the fish room. And uh, thank you so much for uh, coming along with me. All right, thanks, thanks for tuning in and I will see you on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. If you'd like to support the channel and all the projects that are going on, consider becoming a Patreon monthly supporter. Starts for as little as $3 a month. Uh, the details are in the description below the video. And don't forget to uh, subscribe, hit that bell, give it a thumbs up and all that good stuff that tells YouTube that this is a channel that they, that they should share with other fish keepers. All right, thank you my friends, bye-bye.